Evolution, it seems, has a strange way of taking plain, straightforward parts of the dinosaur with obvious functions and turning them into garish, baffling appendages whose purpose is the stuff of mystery and controversy. But as always with evolution, there's a method to the madness. Perhaps nowhere is the dinosaur's penchant for turning the straightforward into the fantastic more striking than when it comes to war, attacking others and defending themselves. Over the course of millions of years, intimidating weaponry sometimes morphed into something else altogether. Take, for example, those perennial favorites, the stegosaurs. Surely these creatures, with their giant plates and spiked tails, were built to stand and fight. What could be more obvious? Certainly, the stegosaurs bristled with fearsome-looking armory. Take Tujungasaurus, one of the earliest who took spikingness to wild extremes. A discovery from China, Tujungasaurus, apparently went overboard with its defensive array. A fearsome row of pointy plates juts out from its back, leading down to a tail that would give any predator or competitor pause. Four paired spikes, each six inches long, project from what was probably a flexible, whip-like tail. Tujungasaurus also sported intimidating two-foot spikes, like bayonets, on its shoulders. But was this all really for battle? Recent research on other stegosaurs has made some scientists rethink the defense argument. Most problematic is the plates. They're in the wrong place. You know, carnivorous dinosaurs probably weren't that smart, but they probably were smart enough to realize that if they bit the animal on the side, they wouldn't have to deal with the spikes. And the spikes and plates alone may look intimidating, but they're not very strong in the armory department. It just so happens that a few days ago, I found a plate of a stegosaur, a huge plate. It was massive. and. Um, when we started brushing towards the end of the plate, I was staggered at how thin it was. Fragile is an understatement. The plates were also full of blood vessels, not the greatest defense strategy. Pitted against the jaws of the largest predators, they would have been snacks. You know, if an Allosaurus bit into one of them, basically there'd be blood spurting everywhere kind of like a, a big old cookie, uh, this sort of, sort of blood-filled, uh, good morsel to eat. All of those blood vessels point to another possibility. The plates were used to regulate the animal's temperature. Arrayed to catch a breeze, they could cool the circulation. Pointed towards the sun, they would do the opposite. But many of the stegosaurs survived with tiny plates or no plates at all, which leads some paleontologists to believe that the stegosaurus' mighty armory, perhaps even starting with Tujungasaurus, may have become more propaganda than pointy defenses. Some argue that almost anything you can point to as bizarre, things like Amargosaurus's neck, Spinosaurus' spectacular sail, and the wondrous heads of so many favorite dinosaurs we're all advertising. Advertising to predators that I'm bigger than you think. Advertising to rivals that I'm fitter than you. Advertising to potential mates that I've got the genes and health to maintain this riot of appendages. It's all about the display. And display, in the end, is all about sex. Everything's for display. An animal does not have to defend itself every year, but it does have to mate every year. So display is the most important thing. Defense is secondary. <laughs>